Y'all get it back there? Right. Say, uh, you, you ain't supposed to be in here. We in the house. You supposed to be in the field. Goliath says, y'all going to send this little, here's what the Bible says, ruddy, stinking, freckled face, sheep smelling food to fight. Me? This is how you know you're close. They try to discredit you. Davidson, I ain't got to prove myself. Let me give you my resume. Uh, first of all, I am the only somebody's around here that kept, that, that kept daddy's sheep. And by the way, while y'all was in there eating grapes, a lion and a bear came and tried to take one of the sheep. And I went over there. I killed the lion and I killed the bear, opened up the mouth, took the sheep back and put it back in the fold. I left the 99 and went after the one. And since I left the 99 and went after the one, God left the seven and came after the one. All I'm trying to tell you is that whatever you want God to do for you second, you got to do for God first. What are you going to leave behind so God can leave something behind to come and get you? He says, the life says, all right, come on now, let's go. He says, all right, take this, this armor. Saul, take this armor. David says, um, I don't fight in nobody else's clothes. I fights in my own stuff. And I don't need your helmet. I don't need your sheaves. See, some of y'all haven't recognized who you don't need yet. You're still dressed in fake friends and dressed in bad relationships. You think you need them to survive. And God gave you everything you needed. He says, I don't need none of it. You ready? Just mount up then, cuz. David pulled that smooth stone out. Hey, I can hear him telling him, he saying, Goliath, now I got five, but I ain't gonna need but one. He started winding it up. I can see Goliath sitting there like, what that little thing gonna do? Let's it go. I see in the spirit. I saw the hand of God. He let the rock go. The rock. God said. And God let it land. And guided it right on the only thing that was exposed. I came to tell you everything you aim at this year, you're going to hit it. Slap your neighbor and say, everything you aim at, you're going to hit it. Every business you aim at, you're going to hit it. Every goal you aim at, you're going to hit it. Somebody shout accuracy. I, I got too much sermon. Let me leave y'all alone. But the Bible says after he hits him in the head. You got to fight. You have to fight. He's fighting you. He's fighting your body. Your mind. Your confidence. Your children. Don't you stand there and do nothing. Fight back. You deserve to have peace. Stop caring about what people think about you. Trying to prove yourself and doing everything according. Well, you know, you just got out of a relationship. You shouldn't be in one right now. They don't know what you should be in. Stop proving yourself. That's why you got in the one you shouldn't have been in because you were trying to prove yourself. 
You don't need all of that. How you know what I need? This ain't the time for that. It might not be the time for you. But you know the rhythm of your life. You know the timing. I wouldn't do it if I was you. Good, because you're not me. But I'm going to do it because the Lord said it. This is a year of expansion, church. I'm going to tell you something tomorrow that's going to blow your mind. And I don't nobody know this, but Pastor Torrance he's the only, and Jackie, the only people I told. When God gave me the vision all year, I had it planned out. And just two days ago, I promise you, this God's honest truth, the Lord came to me in my prayer and he told me, double it. He said, double it. Now, I got to be honest, when God said double it, I, I got nervous. And then God showed me somebody who was quadrupling it. And I said, yep, I'm going to double it. I'm going to do exactly what you told me. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. And see, double it for you might not mean double for her. It doesn't matter. Whatever your left, just double it. No, it, stop competing. Stop trying to prove it. Just double what he gave you. Wouldn't double what you already have help? You don't need double what he has. You might not be able to handle double what he got. He might not be able to handle double what you have. But whatever you got, the word of the Lord is double it. Whatever you aim at, you're going to hit it. If you're in this place today, everybody stand where you are, just the workers. Don't nobody move. I'm going to do this in 30 seconds. If you're in here today, this is the last Sunday of the year. I'm on the airplane, and I see five to seven people of the Asian persuasion getting on the plane. And every one of them have a mask on. I didn't think anything of it until I got off the plane and got in the airport and saw some more Asians with masks on. Got on the plane to come home and I saw some more. Then I thought something must be going on that I don't know anything about. I land and I hear that beer has caught a disease. I guess some of y'all drink Miller Lite, that's why you don't know what I'm talking about. But for all you Corona drinkers, there's this, there's this disease right now. And this is what makes it dangerous is because um, the Chinese population um, is about 15% of the Earth's population. Over 1 billion people in China. And this disease is extremely deadly. And just recently, if you've been watching the news, they just found a couple cases here in America. So this is, this is it's very dangerous. And it is not only dangerous, but it is also contagious. Uh, you can catch it. Well, I, you know, when I, when I heard that, obviously, like you, uh, not throwing caution to the wayside, you wash your hands and make sure that when people cough, you hold your breath. And make sure that when they cough without covering their mouth, you give them a look like dog. You know, I, like you, I, caution. I don't know if I'm going to be around wearing no mask. Um, too much swag for that, but um, if it gets bad enough, we all consider it. Can you imagine us all in here in church? <laughs> Can't get nothing because it's... 
and and I, I I I took it serious. But let me tell you what shocked me today. I opened up my brokerage account and see that the Dow Jones has dropped 1.6 percent, and that the Dow has gone down almost 500 points because of a virus. Now we got something to talk about. Because you mean to tell me that this disease is so serious that it is affecting the gross domestic product of an entire globe? That this disease is so important or so potent that it has people worried about where they invest their money? This is important, guys. I want you to pay attention to this. So then I did further research, and the United States of America has about a 1.5 to $2 trillion budget. Now, our gross domestic product is about $20 trillion, but we're not talking about the money that's within the economy. We're talking about the money that the government has to use that is allocated as a representation of taxation from you and I, which averages about $12,000 per person in annual revenue from taxes that is given to the United States government. So you're talking about one to two trillion dollars. And then I looked it up and the EPA or the Environmental Protection Agency has about a 40 billion dollar budget which if you allocate that on the 2015 numbers we only spend 3.5 percent of our gross domestic product on the environment 3.5 percent of the entire budget of the united states of america 3.5 percent less than a tie 3.5 percent is spent on water and air and pollution. Conversely, our defense budget is 600 billion. So we spend 54.7% on defense and 